Now we kind of get into the main portion of your panel here. Um, this is basically, everything's labeled all along the bottom here of what gonna, it's gonna be. It's gonna be anything marked blue is typically gonna be on, anything gray is gonna be off. But you can see we're on your home screen. So if you're confused what any of these different sections are, it will tell you in the top left what it is. So on your home screen, it kind of gives you the most popular, most common things that you're gonna use here in the coach, but I'm gonna kind of scroll through them individually here on the bottom. So your first one is gonna be all your lights. Now, like I said, anything blue is gonna be on. Now what's cool with your lights is anything with these little arrows next to it, you can press and hold that, and it'll give you a dim switch. All you do is press it to however dim you want. Then you go back. Only other thing I wanna show you on the lights is this light master switch. So when you hit this, it has a memory. So I'll give you an example. If I take these two things off here, hit the master switch, all the lights go off, turn it back on, the same ones that you had off previously are still off. So you can have a, like a favorite set of lights or something like that if you want to set them. Moving on to the next one. Probably the most complicated portion of the panel. Um, you won't have to use this too much, but it's still good to know what everything means. Um, this is kind of your power or energy management system uh, portion of your panel. Starting on the left, you can actually see your battery levels here just like you can on the home screen. And it shows you everything underneath that is all your solar diagnostics. So you can see how much power your, your panels are pulling in or how much they're putting out into your batteries. Below that, you have your inverter power button. So you can turn your inverter on and off from in here. You can turn your solar charger on and off from here. And with the settings button, you can actually customize your inverter, uh, which is pretty cool. And to the right of that, you have your energy management system, which pretty much is this whole line here. It basically gives you a flow chart of how power is going through your unit. So it's starting off at 30 amp, which we're plugged in right now. This will look a little different when you're plugged into 50 amp. It'll actually say 50, 30, 20. Um, and also has your generator as an option down here on the right side. But it's showing you how the power is flowing through all these boxes and then going right into your batteries, okay? Um, what's important about this energy management system is that when you have it on, it's basically, it does limit you, but it's for the good of your coach. So when, when I say management, it's, it's not gonna let you run a million things and start popping breakers. It's supposed to prevent that. So when I turn this off, it's basically giving me free reign to do whatever I want. You can see it's not tracking anything anymore. So I can turn anything I want, but you're gonna start popping breakers and it's not very good for the coach. So I recommend keeping that on pretty much at all times. And right now I could choose to operate on less power if I wanted to. I'm not gonna do that because I'm running your furnace. I don't wanna shut down your coach. But, and I also mentioned, you can start your generator from this panel, from this. Um, you pretty much just hold start. It's a diesel generator, so it's gonna take a little longer to get started up. I would, if it doesn't start after maybe 15, pushing 20 seconds, you probably have a different issue, but that's how you do it. And then you also have how many hours the generator has run in its lifetime. And below that, you have an auto gen start system. This is how you turn it on and off. So you'll see this pop up here. You follow the instructions and then your AGS will be on. But this, if you wanna set your auto gen start, I'm just gonna go through manual just to show you. You can do the easy start, might make it a little better, but you can actually set it to your generator does turn on automatically when you have low battery voltage, which you can set over here. You can do it with HVAC. So say you have a pet or a little kid that stays on board uh, and you plan on leaving the coach. If it gets too hot in here, you can have the ACs turn on automatically if it gets too hot in here, but you'll need the generator to do that if you're not plugged in. Um, or if you have insufficient shore power, so say you're plugged into 50 amp and you're not getting insufficient power from that 50 amp, your generator will kick on and make up for that insufficient power. Last option is quiet time. So say a campground, you know, quiet time is at 10 o'clock p.m. You fall asleep at nine, you forget to turn the generator off. It'll shut the generator off automatically. So you just set all those, then you press finish. And it sets it up, easy. Moving on to the next one. This is your climate control. So this is all your heating and cooling. Um, not necessarily hot water, but it is, but I'll explain that in a second. Basically, when we go over your furnace, your air conditioning, and your heat pump, that's all gonna be generated by these three little spots up top here. You'll notice on the left, 
I actually have your furnace running in the rear zone. Now, in order to have the furnace running, you have to have that blue button selected. And this actually controls the fan. So if I had furnace on with low, it's gonna control, control the fan up on the ceiling. So you don't wanna have that fan running while you're, for no reason while you're running your furnace. The only time you're gonna use this is if you're gonna use heat pump or AC. So heat pump is actually your electric heat coming out of the ceiling, or air conditioning is your cold air coming out of the ceiling. And you'll notice on the bottom here that this little flame is lit here. That basically is showing that your furnace is lit and currently heating. So we're trying to get it up to 68 degrees when it's actively 64 here in the coach. In the red and blue arrow is how you control the temperature set. And the only difference between uh, your heat and cooling is you'll have different icons below the arrows. The heat pump should be a couple lines that'll look red. And if your air conditioning is running, you'll have a snowflake and that should turn blue. And that's how you'll know when it's actually odd. And same goes for all three of these. The only different part is that you have no furnace in the middle. And if you look here related to the furnace and your hot water, this is your aqua hot settings. So right now I'm running off diesel. I could run it off electric. Um, it uses an electric element, which is, you know, I was taught that it's like heating water with a hair dryer. Um, so it's really not super sufficient unless the water is already warm or if you're in summertime. So you're really gonna primarily be using diesel for hot water and furnace, um, but you do have the option to do so. So your diesel button there, electric there. Now you're gonna have to press that in order to actually get your furnace. So that's why we have your diesel on right now, is, it, is to run your furnace. Otherwise it's not gonna have that flame icon popping up. Last thing on this is you got your floor heat which I mentioned is electric only. You hit that on, I'll show you here, just like so, super easy. You can set it to one, two, three, four, and five, three being in the middle, five being the hottest. Now we usually recommend you start at like one, two, or three. Um, these do have a little bit of a delay when they kick on, so it takes about 45 minutes to an hour to get it up to the right temperature. So if you set it on five, it can be a little bit too overwhelming once you get to that point, but it's our, once you set it to five, it's gonna be at five. So really be careful on what you set it to. And you also have to be worried about what you put on the floor when using floor heat. Don't use rubber carpets when you're putting it on four or five. It has been known to melt the carpets and stick to the floor. So be aware of that. But that pretty much covers everything on your climate. Moving next, we have your slide controls. Now. Basically on this panel, you have your controls for your rear slides. So this one controlling your bed and this one controlling that TV side. You can use this for your front slides, but it does give you a caution. It's saying, hey, make sure you check your seats before you start moving your slides from here. So it does give me access to do it. But I would advise you to do your rear ones first, then work your way up to the front using the buttons on the chair. It's gonna make sure that you, you can see everything from a better angle. But in case those don't work, you can do it from the panel. Now, in order to work your slides, you have to have make sure both of these buttons are green. So it'll show slide operation with two green buttons. Make sure your ignition is on. Doesn't mean if the vehicle has to be running, the key has to be turned forward. And the parking brake should be engaged, especially because you'll probably be parked when you're doing this. But just to make sure, make sure both are green. Next one is your power shades. Um, you can do each one individually, they're all labeled, or you have these master switches. So you can do every single one all at the same time, which is super nice. Next one, these are all your fans. So you'll notice you can control your fan. So these are lifting up and down the lid, and these are turning on the actual fan. And you also have a ceiling fan in the bedroom, which you can do here. And you can lock your entry door and your bay doors now remember that your bay doors just mean the ones that have the storage compartments. These will not be locking your power cord, your def fluid, or any of those compartments. These are only ones with storage. And this one is for the TV lift, but this one is only for the front TV lift, not your bedroom. Getting to the last portion of the panel, it kind of gives you a bunch of settings on this one. You can change the time, it shows you the model of your unit, temperature units, screen brightness, you go into screen settings, you can actually change the time, the screen timeouts on you. So if you let this sit for too long, it'll actually just go dark and turn off. You can change the bottom buttons to words, or you can leave them on icons, whatever you prefer. 
And you can change the color and background of everything. Go to switch settings. This is where you're going to set your door pin. You come in here. It's four to six digits long. It's going to have you input your pin. You press enter. It's going to have you confirm the pin and do it twice. And you also have the doorbell. So you can actually turn your doorbell on and off from there. And these just show all those panels and the key fobs that come with the, uh, the unit and shows that they're all connected to the unit, which is nice. And last is your diagnostics. It's, if you go all along the bottom here, you'll see a lot of these lit up. It's showing that anything that has power has access to power at the time. The main little spot that you want to know is this fault status one here. Right now there's no faults, but if anything goes wrong in the coach, you'll usually get a little icon that pops on the screen. You come here, it'll give you a code of some sorts, and it'll have you try to troubleshoot it. So that is pretty much everything on here. Last I wanted to show you, these are your tank levels right here. So you can see your diesel, black, gray, fresh. And you do have a water pump switch here on the front as well. All right, so that's everything on the panel.